I get a little fussy on this topic um, because we take it, you know, technology first, right? And then we always talk about connecting to business and all this other jazz, right? And one thing I learned in the middle of my career when I used to have a little allergy to things like uh, advisory boards, right? And then, you know, being able to set up, you know, different, uh, we'll just say, even leadership sections within the business to go, hey, could we help prioritize these things? So I'm like, no, we know this much better than you. I was like, I realized it was backwards, right? So now yeah. I, I got to the point in my career now where if I walk in and any engineer that's ever tied to me or any data product manager otherwise, and if they can't articulate the impact of their work, we shut it down and I'll put my badge on it, right? So I think we've, we're seeing more and more, there's a couple of great HBR articles that has even come out recently on like measuring the impact of the data and analytics organizations. And I think mm -hmm. the one thing I always, I always advise every time I'm with any customer or prospect is, Every single thing you should do should have an actual shared OKR with the business user, right? And it's not just to deliver that, but it's also to think about, it's innovate with, right? Every single thing you should do, if it's successful, it's going to transition into function or it's going to transition into the product organization. So you can be an innovation arm, right? And you can show them how to use these tools, but if it doesn't transition into them, it's not yeah. sustained the flywheel transformation. And everything we do should be foundational for the next couple of years and the next couple of innovations. So this is where I'd say like enable safely, right? right? But when you're doing that safe enablement, it should really be through a shared OKR with the business user. Otherwise, what are you doing? Well, you put that so well. And I like to say that I want everyone on the team to know how they're driving ROI with, with what you're doing today. Is it, are we trying to drive more sales? We're we trying to reduce expenses. We're we trying to create new capabilities. Um, Sue, in your walk uh, at IBM, is this? Uh, are there some things that you've come up with for your clientele? I don't know whether I want to always speak about IBM per se. Uh, I really liked, you know, what Nick said about ROI and measuring the impact. I think around the data management strategy, I think someone else also had said something about visibility uh, within within the entire enterprise. I I can't speak on behalf of an entire global organization, but I've worked with a number of global organizations have come to the conclusion that when it comes to things like data management strategy, we assume that we have something enterprise-wide, we probably do, conceptually we do, and we all agree on it. It's the implementation of how that in, uh, strategy gets enforced across the enterprise that I, probably would like to take a step back and say, I'm not quite sure that we are all enforcing it in the way we need to enforce it, or that we've uh, had some learnings where we could mutually benefit from each other enterprise-wide, maybe broad categories, yes. So then that then feeds into what Nick said about measuring the impact of ROI, right? The measurement largely is usually includes finance, right? Dollars, cents. But it needs to go way beyond that. It actually, the toughest measurement is actually around the quality, right? And quality is very sometimes difficult to measure because we have different formats and different ways of understanding what quality means, especially around data quality. And does it have subcategories such as accuracy, such as validity, such as reliability, such as explainability, time to value speed, things that we use for go-to marketing? Do we have an enterprise-wide understanding agnostic of the sector that you're in or agnostic of the geography that you're in that your enterprise data management strategy actually has those subcategories by which you're also going to start measuring? So those are the things that, and I don't think it's specific to IBM per se. I don't think it's specific to any large or small company. I think anyone in this real probably is using it. My only take on this is, do we know and are we sure that we are enforcing it in the way we should be enforcing it? Or do we all agree on the key metrics? Are we looking at the key metrics in the right way? Are we collecting it in the right way? Are we evaluating it in the right way, which is different from data analysis, data analytics? People always think data, not, not everybody, but sometimes we intertwine data analysis or analytics into evaluation. Very different. You're measuring something that's very different. So those are the, and these are easy to do things, right? So I think someone taking the bull by the horns and saying, this is what we're going to do and let's see whether we can 
establish a CQI process, a continuous quality improvement process that actually informs our data management strategy continuously so that, again, mm -hmm. um, we truly adopt something. So there's a, there are components of change management part of this, right? And alignment to what Adrian was saying. And I love the fact that he said, I'm twisting this. I'm not twisting it, but I'm looking at it from another angle. I'm going to look at the business skills and then the alignment with the I, I, IT skills. The whole purpose of data management is not that it resides with data folks. To David's point, data culture means everybody is an owner of data. And I can guarantee you this, that yeah. most people will point a finger and say, William is the head of data, go to William. The rest of us are one is in business, one is in IT, one is an AI guru. So these guys are not data, right? We've created some silos that need to be broken. Oh, yeah. I love that point, Dr. Sue, because it's like you got to meet the business where they're at. Every organization is going to have a different answer, a different response on how they roll them out based on yeah. the data culture. And a different perspective on what what this problem is. Now, Adrian, you're a former CDO. How would you advise your your former self now that you know a few more things from uh, being on the vendor side? <laughs> yeah, it's uh, the uh, the ability to look back is, is always fascinating. The things I should have done. I think taking everything that everybody's already said and maybe tr I'm trying to bring it together a little bit, the... The vision, so if I'm as a data leader, the vision I'm trying to create is just tricky. Uh, one of my old bosses, uh, global CIO at Shell once said, you know, he came out big speech and he said, we only celebrate business outcomes. And everyone in IT sat back and said, yes. And then we said, how? And th the challenge was, it's difficult for IT teams, especially if you're deeper into the technical layers to really understand how, what your impact is in the business. And so I think that that's challenging. Um, we talk about creating an abstraction layer, right? We think about making it simple for the business. And so let's imagine this abstraction layer. If you're on this side of the layer, you're on the business side. I don't want you to see the complexity on the back end. I want to make it really easy for you. So you can't see through that pane of glass. All you see is the simplicity, the data products, easy ways for you to mm. get the data you need to drive insight. You're on the business side. You can't see through the abstraction layer, but it's different on this side. If you're on the IT side of that abstraction layer, I want you to see through the glass. I want you to be able to see what happens with your data, who's using your data, how they're using your data, and to be very open and honest about where it's falling apart, where quality is an issue, where security is an issue. And so in, in some senses, we're making it harder for the IT teams, but I think if the IT teams can see it through the glass and understand what's happening with their data, that's the culture I'm trying to drive. Much better IT and business visibility end to end, but I still need to keep it simple for the business in the front end. I think it's funny that I'm, I'm asking about data management strategies and everybody's going to to business, which I think is great. We've come a long way. We've really <laughs> come a long way since we're doing this. Yeah. Uh, now, um, Sanjay, um, was there- yeah, I just want you to say, you know, there's something which is very, uh, I think, very unique to this whole space uh, with, with the current, you know, model around cloud data warehouses. So one thing which, uh, which I find very, very interesting is that people talk about using more data but we seldom actually never hear about exit strategy for data. Huh. Well, so, and that is uh, something which ironically is like very key, you know, how to use your uh, data stack in the right way. So when we talk about cheaper decisions, right? At Revify, we've seen you know, cheaper decisions, better decisions, sorry, cheaper and faster, right? It really encaps, the intent is to encapsulate, you know, how much is the cost of having this delivered? And at some point, when it stops serving its purpose, is there a way for us to remove it? Mm. Is that actually this goes back to again the points which also I think Adrian was talking about is that the data teams also need to have visibility is that is the purpose no longer there for businesses to use it and if it's not there how do we remove it and what's the what's the we have to feel empowered to remove it mm -hmm. so I, I just wanted to address yeah. that is the key area of which I'm that's a good point and and Sanjay may not say it but but his product does a great job at identifying the data that is used and not used and maybe you could get rid of and save a lot of money. Um, absolutely. Great point. Now, David, um, uh, for your product, for any of these products here uh, represented today, uh, I know that clients will, will bring up, well, how does this align with my, my data management strategy, my overall strategy and where we're going? And that can kind of slow things down sometimes. So, how do you keep them keep them moving with their data management strategy, but also get the data catalog moving at the same time? Yeah, you know, I think 
it's really interesting. I agree with everything that was said, you know, earlier. It, it really is comes down to the the business outcomes and you know what are the OKRs. We don't do data management, analytics, or I AI for the sake of doing it. We do that really to solve a business challenge or business problem, you know, something faster or risk or what have you. Um, I think. You know, we have a, a consumption tracker as well. And, and you know, you know, per, per uh, the earlier point on, hey, what's being used, what's not being used. And I think we should have an exit strategy for data. That's That was really interesting. I think um, with, with generative AI and, and, and sort of traditional or predictive AI, whatever term you want to use, I think we're seeing a, a really an elevated importance on data quality. You know, we've all heard the garbage in, garbage out. But if we are running our business on analytics in AI, we better be sure that we have the the best quality data we can. And, you know, it was, it was brought up earlier on, you know, data products, we support that and, you know, critical data elements. We really need to invest in understanding what is the problem you're trying to solve and work backwards and have that drive your data management strategy versus just Hey, we got a strategy, but not tie it to a, a business outcome. And let me say, David, I really like what your what Alation is starting to do with data products. I think uh, there is some; it's a really nice interface. So, so nice job there. Thank you. Yeah, that's, what, uh, I would like to add one more thing here because again, close to my heart. Um, when you're talking to one of the leaders, right? They were saying, "Should I wait for the best data quality?" It actually, goes back to what you're saying, David. Absolutely, like strong plus one. Before I start using and building my entire, you know, beautiful analytics or AI on top. And then the answer to that was, we said, you know, I mean, uh, if you wait for it, it's likely not going to happen for the perfection. <laughs> the idea is that the sooner you start seeing it, you put you in that cycle of knowing, you know, where do you want to you know, improve things and make it right? Because you can't do it all for everything at the same time. So helping, you know, focus on what matters. It really is about handing out certain times, you know, products to people and then iterating on that. But I absolutely right. You know, it's truly a garbage in, garbage out model at the end of the day, and uh, we want to fully imbibe. Yeah, I, I like to say though when I hear that uh, uh, that if you're receiving garbage in, it's not good enough to turn around and just give that garbage out. You be a refinery and improve that. So it's so you're not just passing. You're not just a pass through, but you're refining with data quality. I know mean, well, got data quality. I'd love to push this one a little bit, though, because I think it depends on what questions you're asking. Um, and it's like I, I, one thing I normally like blow up a little room with is go, I'm in a data analytics space, but I don't actually care about data. What I care about is insights. Right. Okay. So if the data is a little dirty, if I have an 80% confidence score, right, I can make decisions off of that. Frankly, it's yeah. what the business yeah. continues to do every single right. day. Right. But how you make sustained long-term decisions like your k10 can't be wrong when you're reporting your financial metrics to the street yeah. but for other ones of like hey i'm, I'm thinking about expert exploration experimentation right can i just get this act like i used to get in fights with my business users before i really understood by going well what question are you trying to answer and they're like i don't know i just want to get access to this do some exploration experimentation and then i'll figure out what i don't know and i learned they're right but at certain yeah. points, you need to have maturity on how those decisions continue to make, drive the enterprise. And that's when it needs to be no longer garbage or 80% confidence score. William, can, can I bring a little bit of AI back into the conversation? I, know, I, know, I think uh, we all went down the data. We, 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 we hooked on that word strategy. And so that's that's our fault. You know, we were like, oh, yeah, let's. But on the data management side, you know, I do think there is there are a number of opportunities or areas where I think AI is, is having an impact, right? Certainly, if you think about data management operations, right? Just creating greater efficiencies in things like data quality, right? There are a number of AI tools out there already. We have one embedded in our solution where you can drive and improve better data quality. Data selection, this is interesting, right? With things like RAG, where you can start to look at using something like retrieval, augmented uh, generation to go out there and actually find the right data to bring into your AI solution. I know that's still evolving. Uh, I know our mm -hmm. team's still playing with that, but the ability to do that with large data sets to very quickly find and and from find the right data and bring it to the right people, that data management efficiency, I think, is 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 starting to really make an impact for a lot of organizations. Nice. Well, 
thank you for that. And uh, I, I, I feel a theme here of uh, let's not be a perfectionist out there. Let's drive ROI within the organization. That's what it's all about. And that's great. Um, and that's true for AI as well. Although, Nick, I'm not sure I could ever say I don't care about data. <laughs> we know what he meant. We know what no, he it meant. gets the attention. Yeah, yeah. it gets it the attention. Well, for me, but I'll work on it. <laughs> <laughs>